and uh, I hope you're uh, hope you're ready to hear this. I was uh, I was a great admirer <laughs> of of the United States. I still am. The proper government under constitutional law. But you see, when I was a young man, um, I believed, like a lot of people do today, that our government could do no wrong. And I wanted to serve the government all my life. So I joined the Air Force first, served in the Strategic Air Command, had a secret clearance, worked on B-52 bombers, KC-135 air, that's KC-135 aircraft, and Minuteman missiles. Uh, received a letter of commendation from my commanding officer. I'd always wanted to be in the Navy. So when I left the Air Force, I was in the Air Force Reserve for a certain period of time, then I decided that I'm going in the Navy. The reason I had gone in the Air Force to begin with was that uh, all through my childhood and teen years, I had suffered from chronic motion sickness which meant that if I got on anything that moved, I got deathly sick, really ill. I mean, like, please kill me, you know, that kind of illness. Chronic motion sickness. It's the worst thing that you can ever get. It makes you want to die. But, you know, after the Air Force, I still wanted to go in the Navy, and I said, to hell with it. I've got to do this. I have this tremendous love of the ocean and ships and the tradition of the Navy, and I'm going to do it. So I did it. I've got to tell you, folks, that when I first went in the Navy, it was still like it always traditionally had been, and I loved it, loved every single second of it, every moment. I loved every ceremony. I loved every rule, every regulation. I, I loved it. It was just... It was me. And I was serving my country. And that was the greatest thing. While I was in there, I learned things and developed friendships and uh, was assigned to different commands. I served in Vietnam as a patrol boat captain, as most of you already know. I was awarded medals with the V for Valor. I made my peace with God. <laughs> I knew that I could die at any moment, and uh, I made my peace. I'm not afraid of death. The United States government has recognized that I'm a brave man. Twice, as a matter of fact. I also learned that most people who go into military service do it because they want to serve their country. They also want to prove something to themselves. A lot of young men want to prove that they're that they are men. They want some kind of verification of that. I certainly did. Most young men do. We're seeking ourselves. The most honorable, most Truthful, best men that I've ever met in my life, I met in the military service, both in the Air Force and the Navy. But the best men I've ever known in my life were in the United States Navy, officers and enlisted. When I served on the staff of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, I became friends with several, well, during my entire career. In the military, both in the Air Force and the Navy, I became friends with several really good officers. The best officer that I ever became friends with was Donald DeGrieff. And at the time that I was assigned to Sink Pack Fleet, Donald DeGrieff was a lieutenant in the United States Navy, which is the same as a captain in the Army or the Marine Corps. While he was there, he earned the rank of lieutenant commander. Well, he went on to command uh, several different 
ships and vessels and commands and things, and he retired as a captain. He was passed over for admiral because he was a Christian. That's right, he was passed over for admiral, for the rank of admiral, because he was a Christian. <laughs> it's the truth, folks. I love that man. He was a great friend. I would have followed him into the gates of hell without question. He was a good personal friend. He was probably the best officer that I've ever known. Now, the reason I'm telling you these things because you're going to hear something that's going to cause all of these things to come into question. And I'm going to tell you right now that with these men that you're going to hear about, it's not in question because they don't know how they're being used. They operate on faith. They are patriots. They really are patriots, ladies and gentlemen. They do not question or believe that their superior officers or the United States of America would misuse them, just like I never believed it until I was assigned to the intelligence briefing team of the commander-in-chief of the Pacific Fleet and discovered what was really going on. If I had never been assigned there, I never would be doing this. I would have served out. I would have retired in the United States Navy, probably. And I would probably, right now, be enjoying my retirement check, wondering what the hell's happening to my wonderful country that I spent my life protecting. I hope you're understanding what I am saying to you. Uh, these men, like your local police officers, and like the agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and uh, your local mayor, even, and your state governor, and your state legislatures don't know the law, even if they're lawyers. They probably have never read the Constitution, don't know what it says, wouldn't know when they're being used unlawfully and unconstitutionally, And all of these things are what have helped lead us down the hill on the roller coaster into the oblivion that we find ourselves in now. The imminent destruction of the greatest nation that's ever existed on the face of this earth, the United States of America, is imminent. We're faced with a civil war in our immediate future because of these things. So don't believe that these individual men who really believe that they're serving their country are the enemy. You may find that they are the enemy on some future battlefield if we cannot re-educate them to understand what they're doing wrong. And in that case, we'll have to kill them if we can or be killed by them. I've also included in these short excerpts some of the things that the militias of America need to know. Need to know. 